Now that we've seen some textures, let's go ahead and grab the textures that we've we've either downloaded and or are using the package that we have. Unity has two different ways of bringing in textures. One way is you can go up to Assets and you can do Import New Asset and you just browse to your location and open them. The other option that Unity gives is a drag and drop style. You can actually just go to your texture folder and select all the textures that are inside it. So for instance with ours, uh, when you went to the site you can actually grab the textures up from there and the textures that we have here if you notice we've got about 37 of them I'm going to actually just drag and drop all of them inside of our texture folder so we're just going to left click and drag over and you'll see that little highlight bar going across here I'm going to put it on top of the textures and drop them on there Unity's going to bring them in for us now by default Unity sets, if you haven't changed anything, Unity will set the textures to a compressed format. We want to change everything back up to a high quality. So let's go ahead and select all the textures inside of here. You can left click to select the first one, and then hold shift and left click on the last one. It will select all of them for us. Now Unity can batch all these together so we don't have to do them one at a time. I'm going to go up to, instead of, like for the texture type, it's currently texture, and that's fine uh, for the first half of them. We'll be selective and change out the uh, normal maps when we look at those. Below there, we want to keep our uh, wrap mode to repeat. And then the other option that we have is going to be the max size, the default value that we're going to use for it. Notice we have all these little buttons down here. Each one, you can be platform specific, so you can actually say, the, the web build is going to use a max size of this kind, the Android device is going to use a smaller one. For us, on, a, on our default, we're going to say all textures, if there's any, will be 4096 in size, that's that pixel size. And then format, let's go ahead and just say true color, we'll keep everything high. Oh, and then also filter mode, let's do trilinear filtering, that'll be the smoothest so that within camera angle, it's going to continue to try to show the texture it's at its nicest point. Click on the apply button and Unity will think for a second, rebuild all the files so that they're using these as their default values. Alright, so the next thing we can do, I'm just going to go through here and selectively click on holding control and it's basically every other one. <laughs> the uh, uh, Each one of the normal maps, so anytime you see that bluish purple tint color, this is a normal map. The, you may have heard the word before, just think of it as light information so that when light hits the surface it has some values to know whether or not it needs to go uh, where to cast the shadows, where to make it look like it's round, make it where it looks like it's bumpy. I'm going to take, and that's just kind of a basic explanation of it, there's a much larger one. Uh, the normal map right here, once we have them all selected, we'll just do them all together. The texture type, instead of being a texture, the normal map will actually be be defined as a normal map. So we'll click on normal map right there and then we'll just say apply and actually make sure the let's see grayscale use height map no, we'll uncheck our create from grayscale because we've already made the normal map we don't need to create them and then just click on the apply button there we go so now all of them are set to apply for the normal style that Unity's looking for. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is try them out. So let's go ahead and go in here and check out, we'll go through the process of one of them and then we'll stop and then we'll once we get done with that we'll just work through all of them. But the first one that we want to look at, let's try just the little plank, that um, the, the little walkway that's right here. Uh, I think we had a good wood one that we were going to use here, it was the floor wood 2. With the texture, if you don't have any materials currently using it, you can just left click and drag it straight onto the object. If I just drag that material over here and let go of my mouse, notice it automatically applied the texture to the geometry. So a couple of things happened when it did that. If you left click on the, uh, the, the cube right here, you'll notice that over on the side, so instead of being our standard default diffuse, it's replaced it. It's put in the floor wood too, which if you notice over on the project, it created a material for us labeled the same as the texture, which is a good thing. The standard type of shader was the diffuse. Let's go ahead and change that one out. So if you click on the diffuse, let's go to 
the bump specular. Now if you notice the bump specular, you got a little bit shinier because our specular map, our gloss map, is in our alpha. And not to sidetrack too much, but just so you can kind of see the alpha map. When it comes to a texture that you use for the project, let me drag this over so you can see a little bit bigger here. So this texture right here is the diffuse map. This is the color map. There is a specular map right here. If you click on the little button, this is going to show you the alpha layer. So there's RGB, there are the red, green, and blue layers, or channels. And then you have the alpha channel right here, which shows you the gloss, the shine level of the texture. This is uh, this was placed in in Photoshop beforehand so we could use it however if you have a texture and you don't have the alpha map applied to it but you want to be able to use specularity you can actually go here and say uh, alpha from grayscale and check this and it'll create a very similar it'll just it'll take the exact same image and just make it gray for you um, and place it here but if you want to do different things to it then you'll want to use a, another a painting program and actually set in different stuff for it all right, so let's go ahead and go back to our material here. So the material that was applied, we had the bumps, uh, the bump specular. There is a main color, which if you remember how we, when we adjusted main color, I can change the color. So it's going to change it to whatever color we'd like it to be. If you want it to remain exactly what the texture is, just keep it on white. The specular color, this can be the shine. So wherever that shine is on the object, if I change the color on the spots that shine, notice the red tint that goes across it. So if you're wanting something to be more of a, a yellowish tone, if you're trying to set a mood uh, in the environment, then you can just change it to that. We'll take it to about a 50% uh, gray on there. And the shininess is how much it actually catches the lights. Is it really sharp on the shine, or is it actually kind of a, a, a spotty? You can kind of if you look right here, when I go back and forth with it, you'll see how it goes really sharp and small, and then starts to open up broad and wide like that. Alright, so once we have those two, the other option you'll notice is that we have a normal map that's not in here yet. You can either go over here to our floor wood and drag the normal map over to it, or you can click on the select, and you can find the, the floor wood 2, which is right here. So if you notice, let's go ahead and take a second and look at it. So if you look at the map right here, if I click on none, do you see how it's flat right here? There's not there's not much definition in terms of like uh, grittiness to it. Uh, but if you click on if I click on the wood, all of a sudden the ridges are showing up now. The texture between the bark pieces show up. So the normal map's going to bring out all that little detail and definition to it. So let's go ahead and select the floor wood too. So now we have our wood texture in here. We have a slight bit of shine to it. And we have it set in place over here. Now, comparatively, and this is just one of those elements that we'll look at now, and then we'll just continue to look when we place textures onto the surface, is that the, the repeating pattern of this looks to be a little bit wide comparative to a six foot tall figure. So let's make it a little bit smaller. When it comes to the size, tiling is the repeating pattern of it. So it's how often is it going to repeat? Let me show you what it looks like on the X, so you can see it repeating to the left and right. So if you notice, this texture doesn't repeat tileable uh, left and right. You can see a seam through it. Um, it's not intended to tile that way, but just as an example, though, is that when you tile, I can get four, one, two, three, four. I can go back to one. Um, but what we want to do is actually repeat this direction, so up and down, so we'll use the Y. So on tiling, let's try what 2 looks like. So 2's there, it looks a little bit small. If we try a 1.5, there we go. So if you notice, it looks a little bit better, but notice the normal map. It look, you, you see a normal map, but it's not actually lined up with the wood pieces we have here. Whenever you change the base layer on this one, you have to make sure you also change the normal map tiling as well, um, if you want it to repeat with the same pattern. So now everything lines back up, and it's smooth where it's supposed to be, and bumpy where it's supposed to be. And there we go. 
All right, so that's going to be the basic process that we go across for all the objects. We'll do one more just to see a different uh, a different setup. So the wood plank number two, this one right here. We'll use this one for the little side side guardrails going over there. So I'm just going to left click and drag this onto here. So you can see as I put it on here, and we have a little flickering here, and we'll we'll talk about that when we get over there for it. But it's close; it'll look decent for uh, for what we want to do with it. I'm going to drag this back over, give us a little bit more space here. All right. So again, just like the other one, it made a mat uh, material up here, wood plank number two. It also put in the shader diffuse, but we know we want to use the bumped specular again. And in the bump specular option, we just want to put in our normal map for our wood plank too. So again, I can just drag this over here and drop it on top. All right. So we have that set in, and now, now that we have this one, we don't have to do the, we don't have to remake the texture for this object. We can actually just go over here to the wood plank too, and we can drop it on top of here, or just as a, another option. You can go over to your material on the selected piece and you can just click on browse and then I can actually choose and look at while I'm choosing I can see which one I want to use based on the more of a visual representation of it there so we'll say we want to use that one just double click on it or select and push enter so there you go so now we have our wood plank we've got our little guardrail pieces on the side is starting to get set in and everything working for us. Go ahead and push play and make sure their character feels like it works well as uh, for the scale, how big you're seeing it on screen. Yeah. So it's looking right. It's feeling right. Alright. So that'll be the, uh, the end of this part. Next one we'll get back into more texturing and we'll continue working our way through the rest of these pieces and using the textures that we've got to give them some life.